Hey, welcome to today's study session. This is a this is a message for Mother's Day, and it's a message called "Mamas Don't Let Your Babies Grow Up to Be Babies." And so, I hope that you enjoy the message. And today, we have a few questions that might help you think about this just a little deeper. And so, I want to start by reviewing some of our key scriptures from today. First, we look in the Book of Acts. Here we go. I'm sorry, Acts chapter 16. Paul came to Derby and then to Lystra, where a disciple named Timothy lived, whose mother was Jewish and a believer, but whose father was a Greek. The believers at Lystra and Iconium spoke well of him. Paul wanted to take him along on the journey, so he circumcised him because of the Jews who lived in that area, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. And so here we have a man named Timothy. This is the first time we hear about him, but he is going to be mentioned 19 times in the New Testament. Very few people are mentioned that much. Not only is he mentioned 19 times, but then there are two books that are written to him. And of course, he's mentioned many times in those books. And those are First and Second Timothy. And uh, just a little irony here. I'm Second Timothy. My dad obviously is First Timothy. And so let me read to you from Second Timothy again, a mention of these two women who was just mentioned in the book of Acts. Listen to what Paul says to Timothy about his mom and his grandma. Here we go. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus, by the will of God, in keeping with the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dear son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve as my ancestors did with a clear conscience as night and day. I constantly remember you in my prayers, recalling your tears. I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I'm reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. Here Paul is recalling Timothy. He holds Timothy extremely dear. That's exactly why he's writing these letters. Timothy was a right-hand man to Paul. He was the one to whom he was passing the mantle down of his leadership and all that he had hoped to accomplish. And so he's placing a great amount of trust in Timothy, and apparently Timothy was worthy of that trust because we never see anything negative written about Timothy. It was all encouraging, like what Paul just said. But here's the key. Timothy just didn't come to be. We see that Timothy had a great faith, and the great faith came from his grandmother Lois and his mother Eunice. Here are two ladies mentioned in the holy book, the number one all-time bestseller. They're mentioned by name, and the only reason they're mentioned by name is that they taught their grandson and their son, how to be spiritually mature. There's another place where Paul says, don't let anybody despise you because of your youth. Here is Timothy, a young man, but he's a young man to whom Paul is passing this great mantle of authority because Timothy is worthy because he's spiritually mature. We talked about mamas don't let your babies grow up to be babies. Today we live in a time when it's very obvious that most people are very immature, they're selfish, they're too sensitive, they, they, they're not faithful, everything's about themselves, they're not real giving, they're not real serving, and they're certainly not loyal. That was opposite of what Timothy was. So let's get into our questions. Here we go, study question number one. Would you consider yourself to be spiritually mature? Are you faithful, self-controlled, do you demonstrate the fruits of the Spirit? You know, it is absolutely appropriate that we would pause and look at our lives and evaluate. The writer of Hebrews talks about that we should no longer be those who need milk. And that is that we shouldn't have to go back to the rudimentary stuff of the faith all the time. I've seen so many Christians that never grow beyond those rudiment things. They think I'm going to heaven and that's all that matters. That is not all that matters. Where would we be today without guys like Timothy or people like Lois and Eudia? And so we see here uh, that this is extremely important 
that we analyze ourselves and see where we are. Are we mature? Second question is this. What qualities did Timothy likely possess that made him invaluable to Paul? What were the things that were evident in him that made him so important to Paul? We don't have to go too far to take a good look at what must have been evident in Timothy for Paul to place such great trust in him. Paul is the one who wrote to the Galatians what the fruit of the Spirit is. The fruit of the Spirit is, that's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, meekness, temperance. And so we see that these things must have been very, very in place in Timothy's life. Well, these things just don't happen. These things must be trained into you. They have to be, they have to be exercised. You see, the fruit of the Spirit needs to, be, needs to be managed. It needs to be cared for so that it would grow. And so the Holy Spirit comes into all of us when we're saved. But the thing is, is that garden tended so that that fruit grows. So Timothy must have had all kinds of fruit flowing in his life to make him so valuable. And so let's go on to the next question, a very important question. What did he receive that made him valuable and what, what did they not do that would have caused him to be invaluable? I'm here today with a, with a good friend of mine. His name is Mitch. He's filming me right now. And he was talking about his beautiful little girl and she's learning how to jump off the couch. Boy, that's a dangerous thing, isn't it? Moms, doesn't that just make you cringe? And so us dads are sitting there going, yeah, jump, jump, jump. And mom is saying, please don't. You know, the things that had to be trained into Timothy were things that may have been dangerous. You know, here's a young man that's left his home at a young age to go wherever it was that Paul took him or sent him. Now, how many of us parents would say, no, 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 you don't need to do that. I've heard parents say, please don't send my children on a mission trip. You know, my daughter's taking mission trips, and boy, I tell you, that, that just kind of affects your heart a little bit. You worry. It's natural to do that. I never would want anything to happen to her. But here's the thing. Wouldn't you rather your child put themselves in the arms of God in the center of his will rather than being in your safekeeping, which is not safe at all? And so the question is, what did they do to train him? They must have equipped him with the word. They must have insisted that he demonstrate these fruits of the spirit, that he would be faithful, that he would be gentle, that he would have self-control. You see, they cultivated that in him. Now, what are some of the things they probably didn't do to Timothy? Don't you imagine that they probably didn't coddle him too much? Don't you imagine that the first interest in his life wasn't comfort or the pleasures of this world, but to be pleasing to God? Don't you imagine that it wasn't in his life growing up? What is it you want to do with your life, Timothy? Don't you imagine it was more this? Timothy, what do you think it is God wants you to do with your life? You see, that's why when Paul came along and said, I have need of you, Timothy was like, that's what God wants me to do. Let me ask you, how are you doing on that? And so let's go to the next question. Did your family raise you to be spiritually mature? Earlier, Mitch and I were having a little conversation about maturity. And we were talking about how a father had bought his very young daughter a, a new, brand new home, a nice home in a nice part of town. And I'm thinking about how I scrounged together the first $800 to buy my own car. I don't begrudge that. And certainly we as parents ought to do what we can to bless our kids. But how many of you know that the real value comes the real appreciation comes when we have flesh in the game, when we have a stake in it, when we've worked hard and maybe we have some help, but we also know that we've been encouraged to lay down what it takes. You know, let's think about our own lives again. How often is it that our parents coddled us, that our parents made the world all about us, that somehow they made themselves to be our providers rather than looking to God? And all of it's innocent enough but it satisfies a personal need sometimes in us parents. And what it does is it leaves our children weak. 
So that leads us to our final question. Are you raising your kids or your grandkids to be spiritually mature? Or are you raising them to be babies? I think that last question for us is the most important one. Are you raising your kids to be faithful, to demonstrate all the fruits of the Spirit? Are you teaching them that life isn't about their own happiness, but it's about obedience to God? Are you teaching them how to lay down their lives for others? You know, you, you probably need to make sure that your kids go on some kind of a mission trip. You need to make sure that they don't get everything they want. You certainly want to make sure that they know that church isn't something that you wake up someday and say, I think we'll go or we won't go. But they understand that they are part of the body of Christ and they will die without being a part of that body. But also the body will never be healthy without them fulfilling their role. We need to make sure that we're on the sidelines clapping for their games. But we also need to make sure that they're on the sidelines clapping for other people. That the whole world doesn't revolve around them. It's really easy today. We have a lot of comforts. We're probably as well off financially as any point in history. And it's easy to make life all about us. We need to make sure that we're teaching our children that life is all about following Christ. That is the key step to maturity. Thanks for joining us. Again, happy Mother's Day. And mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be babies. <laughs>